good to be Clean back, camera. huh? What up, everybody? Yeah, Matt and Name Nick here. Clean camera, clean face. All my Let's see how many people come in. Clean I, I connection. Many people are in the chat here. All right, welcome in. This is the Celtics post game show, Super Bowl edition, I guess. Here, even though uh, yeah. I, I kind of felt like that whole, uh, you know, what the last four years in a row, the Celtics won Super Bowl Sunday. A huge jinx going into this one. But when the game actually played itself out, I mean, did you? Did anyone even think the Celtics for for a second had a chance to to win this one? And throughout the fourth quarter, at least, I mean, one hundred to ninety one, the Suns taught the Celtics here. Uh, you got, you know, for for a team that we talk about, how many different players can they have? You know, to, to really contribute offensively. So he's got six against the Suns. Six players scored in double figures here. And it still wasn't enough. Kemba Walker struggled, of course. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about that. Jason Tatum, a lukewarm shooting night. Uh, not exactly what we wanted to see out of him, especially down the stretch. But when the Celtics offense looks that damn desperate, I, I mean, that's that's what you get, right? Right, fellas? Uh, Nick Nick Gelso, of course, like I said, he's joining in here for, for John. Uh, we got Bobby Manning, Jimmy Toscano. Jimmy, let, let's start yeah. with you, man. Jimmy, Jimmy, you came in here fired up because it's like you don't even want to talk about this game. You're already moving on to the, to, Listen, to, to the Super Bowl, right? You don't even want to get into this. I want to talk about this game as much as it looked like the Celtics wanted to play this game today. I mean, we're looking at like 80 points in the fourth quarter. That is ugly, ugly basketball. I actually thought that the Celtics would come out uh, a little bit differently in the second half because they shot so poorly in that in that first half. But, man, it was kind of like more of the same, to be completely honest. I mean – Listen, I know no Jalen Brown today, but that's no excuse. Um, you know, they've yeah. been able to compete a lot better than they than they did I thought today. I mean, I'll give them props for hanging around in the end. I thought uh, the P party uh, kept them in it with some big, big threes uh, in that second half there. I know Kemba Walker struggled all freaking day. And if John was here, uh, I know <laughs> we'd be 10 minutes in on Kemba Walker right now. He hit a couple big threes himself down the stretch, but he missed another one late, uh, even later. So, um, you know, very inconsistent. Uh, you know, that's kind of been the story with, with Kemba Walker, and I know that's one of the big issues people have with him. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't enough today. Um, frustrating. Um, it looked like it just looked like uh, Phoenix had a lot more energy um, from start to finish. And, I mean, Devin Booker did a, little, did a lot of everything. I love Devin Booker, not just because of today, obviously, but, I mean, when you talk about – some of the best scorers in the NBA. He's right, right up there at the top where like a guy that can just like change the game in, in like 30 seconds, all of a sudden he goes, you know, three straight down the court and, you know, eight straight points all of a sudden, you know, keeps the suns in it right there. So, um, yeah, tough loss some, today. he got some significant help, you know, obviously Chris Paul made a hell, hell of a difference on that team overall all season long. But, uh, I couldn't help but think of, think of John when I was watching this one, when he always talks about how are you going to disguise Kemba Walker's defense in that starting five. Why did he get exposed in this one? John is he just ingrained really in our heads while we're watching games now. So seriously, I'm like, look, they're not hiding him. And then it just looked like there's no way you can put him where he looks somewhat decent out there on the, de- on the defensive end of the floor. Bobby, let's start. Let, let, let's uh, let's turn things to you here. What do you well, think that's... happened there defensively? I mean, they, they obviously the, the starting five got outmatched, but how come they were unable to recover in the fourth quarter, especially when it seemed like Jason Tatum – and Kemba Walker with those two big shots that Jimmy talked about. It seemed well, like the, the, the momentum shift was going to happen. Their style came back to this one because they finally went against a center who's dominant on the boards, who isn't going to let Tristan Thompson get a million rebounds. And Thompson did do a great job on the offensive glass in this one, but he didn't finish. So a lot of times it would just lead to a second miss or a turnover or something like that. And then the Suns were right out in transition at the other basket. I think that's why they went to Daniel Tice in the end. I, I saw some people wondering why they put Thompson in crunch time. They're looking for a little more transition defense down the stretch there, and they did do a better job. But then Devin Booker kills you in the half court. They get within three. He hits that 20-foot jumper, and then that's the game right there. I, I knew this game was going to go in a bad direction from those opening seconds, just like you said, Joe Sway, though, because they put Edwards out there. They put Kemba out there, and it's like, who are these two guys going to guard? They're going against Paul and Booker, two of the best offensive guards in the league. And those two guys just came right out. Booker specifically, five straight possessions they score. And the Celtics were struggling to get stops all night. It was just basket city under the rim. They have great pull-up shooters around the perimeter. And, you know, another game where the Celtics defense gets torched. The final score wasn't too bad, 100. But on a, a day where you struggle from the field immensely, that ended up just being enough for the Sun. So I still don't trust this defense. Like they they make great strides again against the Clippers. I think it's been a couple good weeks of progress now, but 
I looked before the game. They're one of the five worst teams are protecting the rim. They're 26th in the league with yeah. giving 64% inside. Yeah, it just seemed like Let's the Suns had way shot. too many. They, they had way too many too many weapons out there. I'm sure Nick was was going crazy because if anything, if this one thing that Nick can't stand is awful defense, right? I mean, old school cat like Nick, he can't stand to see the Celtics. Did this bring you back to 76, Nick? <laughs> Oh man, you know what it brought me back to 76, 70 points like that <laughs> Nick, how many how many uh how many yeah. cigarettes there, ripped through in that game? You were there with me, I think. We were sitting by each other and watching the Celtics give up all these points to Devin Booker. Uh but yeah, I mean defense frustration, but what's more frustrating, and I know you guys will <clears throat> kill me for this, but it's the three point shooting. Even when they're making it, they can't make regular field goals. And you can pretty much count on, you know, their field goal percentage was horrendous, but they shot well from three. That three-point shot is the undoing, in my opinion. It is so annoying. Can, you know what else is annoying? Nick, the camera that, that kept them, Why are we that killing them? in the first half, though. What was that, this way? That kept them in in the first half, though. That's, yeah, it's well, tough. I know, but it works both ways. We always say live and die with the three, right? Well, today you didn't live or you, you didn't die by it, but you didn't live by it either because you couldn't hit a shot from two feet away with bad interior defense. And 